This video has been a long time coming. I get the question a lot, do we do our noise reduction first on the raw photo or can we do all of our editing and do our noise reduction last? Um, and the question really comes from if we set a couple of just, I don't want to say ground rules, just kind of a base understanding here. If you're into high ISO photography, low light photography, Lightroom and Photoshop don't cut it. Okay, we can get that out of the way. So we have to go to a third party application for it. Uh, Topaz, On1, DxO, there's other ones out there. Honestly, I've tried them. I've tried a bunch of them. They're all really good. I, I can't really see much of a difference between them. I know some people do, and that's fine. Use whatever one you want, because I think what we're about to talk about here still applies to it. So, But I've settled on Topaz for the apps that I use. Um, and like all other noise reduction apps, they recommend that you start with the raw photo first. So what I did is I did it a whole bunch of ways, prepared some layers here inside of Photoshop, we can take a look, pixel peep, and see what we get from it. All right, so let's jump in. As you look at my layers panel, you can see I've got all the different versions that I did. I'm not gonna go do them all by from scratch here. It'll just take a long time to do it, but I'll, I'll just walk you through really quick. I essentially opened up Denoise and I opened up Raw Photo into Denoise and I used the Raw model. Uh, let's just go back over here to the editor. There we go. So I used the Raw model for that one, okay, which is, I mean, if Honestly, if you're going to open up the raw photo in there, you almost have to, like that's gonna be the best model for you. And then I just did the defaults for the model preferences. Did the same thing with Photo AI, opened it up you know, directly in here, just used the autopilot settings. And then what I did is I went into Photoshop and I took the original photo, which is what you see here. So if you wanna just get a quick look of, of what that looks like. And then I just made two copies of it and I went to the filter menu down here, I went to filter and I did one on Denoise. I believe I used the clear model was the one that came out the best because it wasn't a raw photo. I opened it up in camera raw first, did some quick editing, uh, just very little uh, exposure change to it. And then I did the same thing with photo AI, just used the defaults inside of there. Again, first opened it up in camera raw, which would be the same as editing it um, inside of Lightroom first and then jumping in there as a plugin. So where does this leave us? Well, let's take a look at Denoise first. Okay, so we'll zoom in. Well, we're gonna go in pretty far here. Let's go into 300%. And let's take a look at the non-raw version. So definitely does a good job of getting rid of the noise, keeps the, the detail pretty well. A little bit smooth, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty noisy photo. If I believe we can go over here to our file info. And I believe, so ISO 4000. So definitely, definitely getting up there on the ISO. Um, so here's the non-raw version compared to the original. Okay. And you could always, sometimes I'll even pull back a little bit on the exposure just to bring back a little bit of that, uh, that grain and that noise in there just to give it some detail. But that's our non-raw version. And then the version that I opened up first into Denoise and then brought here into Photoshop, you can see this is that version. So here is the non-raw version. Here is the raw version. All right, so what are the differences? To me, overall noise reduction looks pretty much similar to each other. I see a, a pretty good amount of detail. I'd say it changes in a couple of small places here. Um, some more detail on the raw version around here. Definitely when you're pixel peeping, looking at it compared to the non-raw version. I mean, I, had I not seen the raw version, I would have said this looked fine, but you can see that definitely leaves a little bit more detail. Now. To me, the story changes when we go back out to a normal viewing distance would be something like this. And to me, they're almost identical. Now, you have to take into account a small change in exposure because what we did is we opened it up into Topaz Denoise first, which is not a raw editor. And it's one of the reasons why I, I, I hate to say never, but I don't ever plan on using it because it's not a raw editor and they're not gonna be a good raw editor. Uh, nowhere near as good as Photoshop or Lightroom, which is why that's really for me always gonna be the first touch point in my photos. Okay, so that's why there's a small change in exposure there because you get that DNG back. To me, it always looks a little funky and I've got to push and pull it to get to what I'm used to with the Adobe Raw editors, okay? So in this case, I would say Denoise wins. Uh, does it win at this level? Again, barring exposure or color changes, does it win at this level? Not much. I, I really can't tell a difference. You've got to have a very keen eye to see some small amount of difference there. Um, and even at a probably a, nor a more normal viewing distance that you might see it on a screen like this, I mean, there's no difference. The, the difference only starts coming when you're gonna start pixel peeping, which we'll talk about in just a moment here. So stay tuned for some thoughts on that. But as you get in closer, yeah, the raw version, 
I think is a little bit better. Now let's compare that denoise to the photo AI raw and non-raw versions. Also really quick before we take a look at that, I promise I'll just take 60 seconds here and you actually save a lot of money if you're interested in, in, in Topaz. But they've got their holiday sale going on. It's like 65% off the image quality bundle. Look at the link in the description. Uh, it's gonna do two things for you. If you use that link in the description, you'll get a free gift from me. I do get a small affiliate commission from it, um, but you'll get a free gift for using my link and it doesn't cost you any more time and any more money. You'll save 65% on with their holiday sale. So depending on when you're watching this, that sale might be over, but uh, their image quality bundle, which is Denoise Sharpen, Gigapixel, Gigapixel, and you get Photo AI. So you don't even have to pick. The individual ones or the all-in-one ones, you get, you get them all. So a uh, really good deal there. And then if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, I have a Topaz deep dive course and that will uh, get you up to speed. It's very small, very short, very affordable. So if you wanna learn more about the Topaz Adobe workflow, that'd be a great place to go to. So we left off where we were gonna look at Photo AI versus uh, using the raw photo and using the non-raw photo. So let me zoom in a little bit here, get you back into pixel peeping land. And here is the photo AI with the raw version of the photo. And then here is the non-raw version. So raw version, non-raw version. Um, same thing, I'm noticing a tiny bit more detail here, All right? Everything else, the noise reduction overall, the overall sharpness of everything looks pretty darn good to me. It looks pretty comparable to everything. But on the on the raw version, I definitely notice a little bit more detail in some of these grittier textured areas that we have here. And you can see that is the non-raw version. So raw, non-raw. Just like before, as we start getting into normal viewing distances, even going to that view, as we start getting into here, and I don't think I would ever show this off any more zoomed in than that, now, to me, the differences become less, right? Do I see it if I'm comparing the two, if I have an A-B comparison? Yeah, but you'll never have an A-B comparison. Nobody looking at your photo is gonna have that comparison and nobody looking at your photo is gonna think, oh man, there's not a lot of detail around the beak here and the, the face and the eyes. Like nobody's gonna think that. But yeah, if you're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, um, I would definitely say the raw version wins. The more you zoom out, the less that the difference that you'll see there. Now. We'll talk about my final thoughts on this in just a second here, but to I know people are gonna wonder this. So how does Denoise stack up against Photo AI? Even though that's not really what this video is about, but we got the versions here. So let's just take a look at them. So let's look at the Denoise raw version. Okay, again, we'll zoom back in and we'll look at the Denoise raw version. And then we'll compare that with the Photo AI, which is the all-in-one raw version. So there's Denoise raw and there's Photo AI Raw. Honestly, to me, they're identical. Other than a small shift in color, which again, it's Topaz's DNG stuff. Um, other than a small shift in color, which I probably just didn't get exactly right when I converted it to bring it into Photoshop, um, identical. Okay, so all those people, and I know I heard from a lot of them this last week, all those people that are saying photo AI is crap and denoise is still the way to go. I honestly thought that, I didn't think photo AI was crap. I think it did a really good job for an all-in-one, um, but I think they've been updating photo AI every week since it came out and denoise hasn't seen an update in a while. So uh, to me, they, they basically look identical. If you wanna compare the non-raw version, so we can go denoise non-raw, photo AI non-raw, again, Denoise non-raw, photo AI non-raw. Photo AI takes the, the winner there to me, all right? Which surprised me because I didn't expect that. And when I first did my first photo AI video, I was actually saying I'll probably still go back and use Denoise because I just felt it did a little bit of a better job. But um, you know, it doesn't give me as many buttons and dials to, to move around, but who cares if the end result is better? That is all that I care about here. And I believe the end result is probably better when it comes to this one. So that leaves us with the, the question that we're asking in the beginning, which is where do I do my noise reduction? Do I do it first or do I do it last or at some point after I've already converted the file from something? Um, all I could speak for is me and my opinion. I'm gonna continue with the, my same workflow. And that is, I'm gonna do it last. I'm gonna do my Lightroom editing first, 
jump over to Photoshop to do some you know, distraction removal if I need to. Um, and then I'm going to do my noise reduction pretty much last on, on just about every photo. Well, honestly, I don't care when I do it, um, but it's definitely not going to be the very first thing I do before Lightroom. You're probably thinking that's a little bit weird because I said the raw version was better and it is. It's just not better enough for me. Okay. Remember your viewers, they're not going to have two different versions to look at and say, yeah, well, that one's a little bit better. They're not going to have that. And so for me, my, my thought process on editing is always good enough is good enough. I'm going to go with the easiest way to do it and opening it, whether it's Topaz or whether it's on one or whether it's DXO and that workflow of having to do that raw editing or that, that, that conversion first, whether or not you can do it from Lightroom or not. And then the problem of coming back and now you've got a raw photo and a DNG photo of which I don't like any of the DNGs, whether it's Topaz on one or DXO, I don't like the way any of them look. Now I've got a raw and a DNG and then I'm going to do some Photoshop editing. Now I've got a TIFF or a PSD file. That's just, it's not a good workflow for me personally, but I would encourage you to do your own tests. Get your own photos, do your own tests, layer them on top of each other the way, I, the way that I did here because I think that's really the best way to judge for yourself to see if you see a difference that's big enough to, to impact you know, when you start to do this in your workflow. But as I said before, for me personally, uh, noise reduction is going to still stay last in my workflow. Speaking of workflow, I've got another video that I'll share here. So I actually did a full start to finish workflow. I know that I didn't really do the full workflow in this video. So if you've got any questions about, you know, where, how do I start? How do I work through all this? When do I jump into Topaz and, and back? When do I jump into Photoshop and back? Uh, this video would be a great place to go next.